This is Detective Okereke. I'm here at the crime scene. It's unlike anything I've ever seen before. No, trust me, Professor. You do not want to see this. It's, it's almost indescribable. There's crumbs just everywhere. Cookies and Cinnabon parts scattered all over the floor. There's some sort of juice or Kool-Aid splattered all over the walls. It's terrific. We're going to need the entire force on this case, Professor. God help us all. Oh, uh, uh, I have to call you back. No, no, I have to call you back. Yeah, the USA Science and Engineering Festival is here. Yeah, they're doing the Spark of STEM Coffee Break series. The one that's designed to inspire educators with innovative STEM tips, tools, and resources that they can use in their classroom, remember? I told you this, it's sponsored by AstraZeneca. Who's the speaker? The speaker is you, Professor Cully Knight. Because you're a forensic science expert who's able to show K-12 through educators how they can create their own mock crime scene in the classroom? Of course you can. You have the ability to show teachers how to make these activities age appropriate. Not everything about crime scene investigation is blood, guts, and gore. You know that. It's okay, trust me. These educators will love the takeaways that you have to offer. And all the energy and the ability that you have to make forensic science subjects relatable is just unmatched. You good? You good to go? Okay, okay. Sorry about that. I, I think all this investigative STEM outreach work is a little daunting. There's some classified DNA material I have to get to. You don't want to see this. I got it. Here's Professor Knight. Thank you so much, Maynard, for that great introduction. I am so excited to be here. My name is Professor Kelly Knight. I'm an associate professor of forensic science and a former DNA crime lab analyst. Welcome to the wonderful world of forensics and to my forensic laboratory. I'm so glad you're here. And I'm so excited to talk to you about how to create a mock crime scene in your own classrooms. Now, some of you may be thinking, hey, I teach younger students. Forensic science is totally inappropriate for my kindergartners or my first graders. But I'm going to show you today how you can create a crime scene that's appropriate for your younger students. I'm also going to talk about how you can scale it up for your older students as well. So let's get started. Now, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about what takes place before you actually create the crime scene activity and they go into the activity um, because we, we have limited time today. But just so you know, we do always begin with an opening discussion. So we want to gauge what their background knowledge is and start the conversation about what forensic science is and what they do. Then I also do a very simple discussion about DNA with my younger students. If I have older students, I can get a lot more complex and we can do a longer lesson on that, but just enough so that they understand what DNA is and where we can find it. And so I love to give this visual to students that shows them different places where DNA can be found. My favorite picture being that gentleman in the top left-hand corner, what is he doing? He's picking his nose. Is it disgusting? Absolutely. And the kids all say, ew, gross. But that is a great opportunity for me to say, but guess what? Did you know you could get DNA from your boogers? And then we go through each of these pictures and we talk about different places where we can find DNA. We also talk about fingerprints and how unique they are. Fingerprints can even tell the difference between identical twins. Then after I do all that discussion and introduction into DNA and fingerprints, it's time to jump right into the activity. So we have a couple more questions about what a crime scene is. And now that they have been introduced to forensic science, we can start talking about how does what we have learned so far, how does that connect to what types of forensic evidence we can find at a crime scene. That way, when they go into their mock crime scene, they can already kind of be thinking about what they're looking for. 
So my favorite crime scene activity to do with younger kids is called Who Stole the Lunch? Very simple. I have changed this for older students as well. We've done Who Stole the iPad? Who Stole the iPhone? Who Stole the Xbox? All different types of variations of this. Now for the Who Stole the Lunch activity, the supplies you can find probably around your house. Your students probably have them right there with them in school. And so the first thing, of course, is the lunch item. So a lunch box, uh, a snack wrapper, so like an empty chip bag or granola bar wrapper, any of those things would work, an empty juice box. Um, and then I also add some other things to it so we can think about other types of forensic evidence that may be there. So a hat a band-aid. I take a little bit of red marker and color in the center so that they can think that the band-aid actually has blood on it. Chewing gum still in the wrapper. So the chewing gum has been uh, chewed um, and then you just wrap it up in the wrapper um, and then you know they can start to think about oh saliva. We can get DNA from saliva. Fingerprints. So my cheat way to do fingerprints is I actually go and find an image of different fingerprints online. And then I create a document for mailing address labels. And I copy and paste those images into the template. And then I print those fingerprints onto mailing address labels so I can create my own little sticky fingerprints. So I can stick them all over the place. No messiness with dusting or inking or anything like that needed. Then I have paper bags, different sizes in order for them to collect their evidence. And then my secret weapon is the flashlight and the crime scene tape. So that really makes it feel realistic. The students love to walk around with their little flashlights and actually hunt for things um, at their crime scene. And I don't know if you feel comfortable with dimming your lights, but the students love for you to dim the lights a little bit. Some students, depending on their age, it may make them a little nervous, but flashlights always make it so much more exciting. Then we do a brief overview of crime scene collections so that when they go into their crime scene, they know the basic steps of what to do. And then I let them have at it. Now, when you set up your crime scene, you don't need a lot of space. I've done a crime scene at literally just a table. The key is how you can hide things, right? So you can put things on top of the table, underneath the table, underneath the leg, underneath the chair. You could turn a chair over and put it on the side of a chair. So there's so many different ways you could get creative with just a small amount of space. You don't need a lot in order to make these crime scenes work. So after they're done with their crime scene collection, we all come back as a group and then we have a discussion about what did you collect? And then as we talk about what they collected, we then dig into the results. So first I introduce at this point who the suspects are. So I change the suspects for every crime scene that I do, depending on the students, the age group, um, characters or individuals who I think they may be familiar with. For this case, we have Peppa Pig, Pikachu, and Bluey, who are our suspects. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the DNA results. So hopefully the students will have collected these items. And then what we can do is look at the suspect profiles and compare that to the evidence profiles. Now, of course, this is a much more simplistic version of what a DNA profile actually looks like. But I go back to reminding them that half of our DNA comes from one parent and half from the other. That's why there's two numbers here. And so as we look, we can do this comparison and see that Peppa Pig is a four five. So she matches the chewing gum that was found in the classroom. Pikachu was a nine ten, So he matches the drink, the snack and the hat. And then Bluey is a seven eight. And so she matches the Band-Aid that was found in the classroom. Then we take a look at the fingerprint results. Again, we're gonna be comparing the known fingerprints of our suspects to the unknown prints um, found on the evidence. So we see here from just a very quick observation that the snack and the drink fingerprints match Pikachu and the desk fingerprint matches Bluey. So after we've had these discussions about the evidence results, we then talk about our conclusions. 
All right, so what do we know about the evidence? Who drank the juice? Who left the items behind at the scene? And can we figure out who stole the lunch? This also leads to a discussion of, you know, you may find evidence at a crime scene that is not related to someone who committed the crime at all. So very important things to consider. You have to think about, does it make sense? So as we look at all the different items of evidence, in this case, Pikachu ends up being the guilty one. Now, this is also the time that I remind them that while this was fun, forensic scientists generally do not actually have any involvement in deciding whether or not someone is innocent or guilty. We generally just do the work on the evidence and then we submit that to the investigators. But it is fun when you get to make those decisions. So there's a lot of different ways to ramp this up. You can add more items of evidence. Um, you can do footprints, shoes, hairs. I like to take clippings from wigs and do hair um, evidence. Uh, you can even add more tools for packaging and collection and analysis. Um, I love to give them personal protective equipment if I have access to it, especially things like gloves, because it reminds them that number one, PPE is important, but it also makes them feel more like a scientist. Also, I wanted to mention that this can be done virtually. I have even done this crime scene activity using a Bitmoji classroom. Now for the older students, Obviously, you can also change up the scenario, change up the suspects, make it more relevant for their age group. I have used, for example, Avengers characters in the past when I'm working with high school students. And then you can also add more items of evidence and maybe some ways to actually test it. So one thing I like to use is synthetic blood because it will react similarly to blood with the testing methods without all of the biohazard. And so I buy really cheap kits called Zero Sticks or the phenethylene kits, you know, that test that turns bright pink in CSI. Um, and I can do those type of simple tests with the older students. And then we can look at some DNA results. So that is how you create a mock crime scene in your classroom. Thank you so much for being here with me today. If you have any questions at all, feel free to contact me. And now I'll give it back to you, Maynard. Big thank you to my friend and fellow Psycomer, STEM advocate, and just all around amazing person, Professor Kelly Knight. Make sure to visit the USA Science and Engineering Festival website to get all of her downloadable material, such as forensic science crosswords, worksheets, and even slides that you can use for your classroom. With that being said, all of these amazing STEM topics that we present on this Coffee Break series wouldn't be made possible without our incredible sponsor, AstraZeneca. They've created a dynamic initiative to engage students to learn about the science behind their own health through the lens of STEM called Generation Health. So check out this segment directly from our sponsor, AstraZeneca. AstraZeneca, Learning Undefeated, and Discovery Education have partnered to create Generation Health, how science powers us. Working with Discovery Education has been incredibly powerful for AstraZeneca because it allows us to reach many, many students across the country and inspire them to perhaps pursue a career in STEM. A dynamic, hands-on, standards-aligned educational initiative engaging students to learn about the science behind their own health through the lens of STEM. In order to support and sustain the growth of the health industry, the quality of care, we must invest in the next generation. Reaching over a million students in its first two years, Generation Health takes students inside the health industry. Bringing those young people closer to our scientists and engineers, closer to our industry, and closer to our company to stimulate their thinking and perhaps inspire them to get on the path to a biopharmaceutical career. HowSciencePowersUs.com provides a broad range of educational resources, not only to students, but to educators and parents. Generation Health sparks students' curiosity with ready-to-use STEM bundles, each comprised of a lesson and illustrated video that dive deep into the science of the health industry. Plus, even more resources like Learning Undefeated, who's bringing hands-on STEM education right to the school parking lot with Drop Anywhere Labs, custom outfitted STEM learning spaces built from modified shipping containers. So it's not enough to just 
describe what we do, we also had to expose them. Generation Health, inspiring the next generation of scientists by learning how science powers us. Thank you, AstraZeneca, for not just being an incredible sponsor, but for all the amazing work you do in supporting and spearheading STEM outreach. Also, a big shout out to our speaker today, the one and only Professor Kelly Knight. If you've been a fan of shows like CSI or FBI or any of the other hundreds of crime-based shows on television, you know how integrated investigative topics are in our day-to-day -day lives. Kelly presented a whole new perspective that shows how you can simplify these highly advanced topics and make them palatable for your elementary and high school students. You can follow all of her amazing work on her website at kellythescientist.com or follow her on social media at Kelly the Scientist. Hopefully, you'll never look at crime scene investigation the same ever again. If you happen to have missed any of our Coffee Break series, you can always catch us on demand. Just make sure to follow at USA Science Fest and stay tuned for updates every Wednesday about new episodes just like this. Also, if you end up turning your classroom or home into a crime scene filled with cookie crumbs and Cinnabon parts, don't forget to use the hashtag SparkofSTEM so we can share your incredible educational work. Now, I of course need to get back to my crime scene here. Someone took my Cinnabons and y'all know how I feel about my Cinnabons. Thanks for watching.